Hi, and I'm back. I haven't really left the headquarters of Luminous Landscape in Indianapolis. I tend to live here quite a bit these days. There's always something going on. Always have cameras, always got prints, lots of projects. But something I want to talk to you today about, oh, and by the way, you hear the thunder and so forth. It's kind of like one of those Frankenstein movies outside. So, you know, welcome to uh, thunderstorms in Indianapolis. In any case, today we're going to talk about the Sony A6300. It's a little camera I kind of fell in love with. The camera body itself sells for just under $1,000, around $950. This is one of the most interesting cameras that I've come along with and, and seen in quite a while. It's super fast autofocus, 11 frames per second. It's 24 megapixels in an APS-C size chip. So any of the lenses you buy normally have a 1.5 uh, multiplication factor to them as far as uh, DSLR equivalent lenses. So I've been using this for a lot of different things and recently I went to Iceland on a workshop and I gave this to my sister to use and she worked with it at both an aperture and P for priority, okay, but she's never taken pictures before so that was okay. And I had put on the 16 to 70 f4 lens. So this is a very, very light camera this way. Now, I've added a few things because one of the things I will talk about here in a second is my big hand, my, the small camera. This is a really cool gadget and it's uh, essentially a thumb rest. I get it from LensMate, you'll see it in the article. And I slide it into the accessory shoe and it slides back and forth like that. But it gives me a place to put my thumb. And then with my hands wrapped around the front and it being able to hold the thumb, I can keep my hand and palm away from the controls here. I mentioned in the article that numerous times when using this camera, I would grip this camera really hard and I would end up pushing a button or making something happen and have to go back and make an adjustment. It's a problem with big beefy hands. I'm sure some people don't have this problem. Sony, if you're listening, it would be really cool if you made like a really simple thing where you push this button twice in the center and it locks everything and you can push it twice again to unlock. How hard can that be? and it would avoid a lot of the issues that I had using this camera. And those were the only issues. Now some people have had overheating, I haven't experienced that. Some people shoot with video and find that they get overheating with it, I haven't. So that's something you have to go along with in the way you, you shoot and how you use it. But I ended up using this recently on a trip to Alaska to photograph bears. I went with Art Wolf and a number of other photographers and we went into the Katmai National Forest, and I needed a system. And I thought about renting a Canon 1DX with the big lenses and everything. And then I actually said, I got a camera that does 11 frames per second. And there's a lens, although it's not an E-mount lens, that has a reach, it's 70 to 400, so that would be approximately 105 to 600 millimeter length that I could hand hold with image stabilization. Wow. So this is the setup I took. Lots of images in the article below. So let's take a look at this. Take that lens off. I use an LEA3 adapter. Now there's two different adapters that Sony makes. One is an LEA4, which has a piece of glass in there that does the autofocusing and so forth. This is an LEA3. I can put my finger through it like this. So essentially it's a pass through which actually acts as an adapter. It has all the electronics so it can focus the lens and you're using all the controls, all the sensors that are on the actual camera itself. So this gets mounted to the lens. And then this gets mounted to the camera. And I now have a 105 to 600 millimeter lens. Now why this was good for shooting the bears? A lot of the Canon guys had the big old white glass, the 300 to 600 or the 200 to 400 millimeter lens. And when photographing bears, it's not like you're shooting a bird on a branch a mile away. These bears are coming at you sometimes and charging at you and working your way around. Now bear in mind, they're not coming at us to eat us, they're coming at us because there happens to be a fish in front of us that they want to eat. So having the ability to be able to zoom in quickly and have the ability to focus quickly and do focus tracking, which this camera did well, I made super images. I was so happy with what came out of this light system. And it's light. It's probably no more than six pounds, easy to hand hold, 
And I was able to fire off images like there was no tomorrow. So something I highly, highly recommend. Watch this. Listen to this. I'll turn it on. Now listen to this. And it's focusing the whole time. So as I'm moving around, I can set focus tracking, and I can set it for wide or narrow. And uh, I was able to catch the bear. And as the bear is moving, whether it's coming at me or going sideways, and I'm moving with it, it did a good job of catching it. I also have focus limiter switches here, which are great, especially if your bears are going to be farther away. And manual uh, focus switch. At the same time, as we have in some of the other lenses, we have focus hold switch. So while I was photographing a bear on a waterfall, uh, I didn't have to use continuous autofocus. I would, bear's not going anywhere. I'm shooting at f11. I would focus, hold the button down, and as long as the bear wasn't moving, I didn't have to worry about the autofocus jittering and jattering and trying to find the lock point. I found it for it, and I just shot away. So this worked out really, really well. I was very happy with this. It's a great system. There's a lot of guys carrying 40, 50 pound backpacks while we're walking through the river. I was carrying this and my sandwich and some extra batteries, and I did have a backup A7R2 and 70 to 200 in the bag just in case I fell into the water and ruined this one. I had a backup for the day, but uh, this turned out to be an extremely great camera with the performance of some of the biggest DSLRs. I highly recommend it. it you have to be a little careful with the buttons. There is new firmware out to solve some of the overheating problem that some people have had problems with. It does great 4K, but probably no more than 10 minutes a crack, and that would be limited based upon whether it's hot weather or cold weather. So it's not exactly the perfect camera, but for what I was doing, for fast action, for quick autofocus, you're not going to find anything better. Now, just to throw this in before we close, I think this is an experimental camera. I think Sony put this together, and a lot of the technology you see in this, you're going to see on some of the future Sony cameras. There are more autofocus points than any other Sony camera and a lot of other cameras, period. So between that and some of the focusing technology and all the things that they put in here, I think they use this to kind of work out the bugs because I think there's something big coming from Sony. And you're going to see a lot of these features migrate over to some of the newer systems. That's my thinking. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I highly recommend this little setup. The LEA3 adapter is perfect. The LEA4 works great, too on some of the other lenses I have, and we'll talk about those in another segment. So there you go. Thanks for coming by. I love my 6300 and 70 to 400 lens. I hope you enjoy the article below. I hope you like the bear pictures that I was able to come home with. I was very happy with them. Sharp as a tack. I made some cool prints with them. And I'll see you on the Luminous Landscape.